Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I am Liviu and today I'm gonna try and repair some GoPros I received from Alexander, a friend of the channel. Thank you very much Alexander for this donation. And as you can see these are Hero 5 sessions. They all suffered some uh, pretty bad crashes. I guess Alexander tried to take them out and see if he can uh, make something out of them. I don't know the state of each. This is the most seen damage or at least the most damage I've seen so far on uh, the ones that I got to work on. As you can see the design has uh, two PCBs connected with a um, flex cable that's built inside the two PCBs. So actually some of the internal layers of the two PCBs jump from one to the other and this one is a little bit uh, flexy I don't know if if you can see it or not but yep because of how sessions are created you have a metal section right on the edge of the PCBs here and when you front hit it that um, metal section presses on to this flex section of the PCB and it uh, gets broken this PCB is very good for um, donating some parts if I will uh, find something wrong with the other two and maybe would help us. This is the case on which that PCB was installed. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the metal section of the GoPro is pretty bent inside. First thing I want to do is just disassemble them and see what is broken and what is not because on this one I suspect the sensor which sits right in there in the middle may have been uh, damaged so it's good to know if it's damaged or not so let me clean out a bit here so let's begin and take out the screws and such this camera is not that great at focusing on where I need to take the screws out. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So we had three torque screws there. Do we have more torque screws? No. We only have Phillips screws remaining. Yep, one. Oh, we have torque screws here too. And we have a metal shield. Have a screw, Phillips screw here, down in there. We also have a screw here. This is the SD card slot, so I took that out. And this thing should come out easily now. So sliding it out so this is the, the sensor the flat cable on the sensor itself looks to be damaged but I, I won't know for sure I will put this aside this plastic holder for the buttons and the screen is definitely broken here so we cannot use that so if we cannot use it let's take it out we have some sticky tape there this is our USB and now I will need to disconnect this microphone from here together with the button, the buzzer and this LED here
Okay, so everything comes out in one piece, like so. Most definitely this screen is not working now, because uh, this is the first uh, damage on your session, the screen. Put that aside. And always have a container for all the screws you take out from a device, not to lose them. Before I will throw this in the trash, I want to show you the antenna which is stuck down here. It's a sticky thing with copper. So this is the Wi-Fi antenna and also Bluetooth I guess. Just a sticky thing that connects over here. So these are the parts from the first GoPro. On to the next. So this is the second GoPro. As we can see there are no screws here and here. The metal is pushed in quite a bit. But the funny thing is that the actual PCB looks to be okay. I mean nothing obviously wrong with it. If you look here this was supposed to be in parallel with the PCB for cooling down the MCU there, the processor of the camera. My first thing to do with this one would be to take out the PCB from here and see what we can find. We have this connector which is for the LEDs, screen, buttons and buzzer. Take that out. Underneath here we will find another connector here which I suppose is for the USB Type-C take this easily out and we should see here this connector and this one for the sensor we would uh, inspect the PCB and see if we can find something wrong with it at first glance this PCB looks to be in pristine condition but we have so little parts here that can be nicked or cracked or even the PCB could be bent then you have a, a mess on your hands because it's almost unrepairable but luckily I don't know how this uh, motherboard survive somehow put this aside and we are going to take what we can off out of this. This one is quite heavily bent but I will take everything out from this one too. We want to have something clean to work with. I'm not expecting the screens to work because well they do break quite easily and they break because of this. This is the case of the GoPro session. The actual case is a transparent plastic and it's quite flexible so when you crash the screen can uh, twist and crack and bye bye uh, screen and this whole thing should come out now this SD card slot it's quite bent I don't know if you can see it or not but there is a bend here going like that this plastic holder looks to be intact so I will not bother disconnecting all the buttons and buzzer and LEDs and such I will just leave it like this maybe it will help me out in testing the the motherboard just look how close this metal radiator because this is a cooling radiator here sits the MCU and RAM and that's taking the heat out to the front section for cooling but uh, look how close this metal is by the the sensor connection hopefully it works put that aside too this is the third GoPro and surprisingly this one looks to be quite Okay, 
I don't know what happened, but it looks to be okay. Does it start? Nope. Let's check the battery. Yep, I have zero volts on the battery. So let's take out the battery first. I am going to desolder these wires one by one. Clean out the pads with some uh, fresh solder to get rid of that uh, lead free. So we have positive on the left, negative on the right. Good. So because the battery was empty, I prepared some jumper cables to connect this GoPro to my uh, power supply and see what's going on with it. So I have positive and negative. The most problematic thing with these uh, GoPros is that I don't have the screens so I cannot see the errors it gives me and also I cannot um, change settings and stuff like that. But I'm gonna try and read the beeps and the LED flashing and uh, signals and all of that based on my experience with the uh, sessions and see if this is working or not. So uh, my power supply is uh, now set at 4.2 volts simulating a battery. Let's power it on. Okay, so I seen an LED flash. So that means that the GoPro went through its initial um, bootloading phases and firmware loading and stuff like that because the LEDs would not light up if something was bad at the power on. Unfortunately, my camera heats up from time to time and I'm um, obligated to shut down the recording and wait for it to cool down. So I connected my power supply, I powered it on. We saw a light, a good sign that the motherboard is working. I um, inserted an SD card in there and I tried to start the recording but I was welcomed with some errors. Because the GoPro was giving me signs of um, partially working because I could uh, press the buttons and hear the beeps like when you navigate into the menu. I had an idea, why not take my good working session 5 and navigate through this menu and end up on the connect new device on the Wi-Fi. So this is what I did. And right now I'm reconnecting myself to the GoPro. Hopefully I can do that. Connection successfully. I can change a lot of stuff. For example, I can go and switch the locket camera. And the GoPro is beeping for that purpose. But on the viewing section I have nothing. So that leads me to think that either the sensor is the problem and I will attempt to switch that sensor to one of mine and see if we get some image after the sensor swap and if not most definitely the PCB itself sustained a damage or a crack or something. Let's take it out now. Let's power it off. So I'm very lucky because the PCB itself is working, the Wi-Fi is working. I will shut off my power supply and let's get to that sensor connector. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the menu button is uh, unsoldered from there. I will fix that later. I'm just roughly inspecting the PCB to see if I can spot something uh, fishy. The thing that makes me wonder is this 
sensor connector on the PCB itself that looks to be cracked I don't know let's check with another sensor and see if that uh, solves my problem let's see what I have here good now let's hook up the power supply Okay, power on the GoPro. I found the camera and let's try and control it. We've seen the flash. But we still don't see any picture. Can we make a photo? We cannot <laughs> because we don't have a sensor. Or at least uh, the sensor is not connecting to the PCB itself. Our GoPro will freeze most definitely. Power it off. I will desolder the cables. And we know that this one works, but we don't have an uh, image capture on it. We will take this and inspect it further on the microscope and see if we can see some damage close to the, to the sensor connection. I don't think the sensor is the problem, so most definitely is something on the PCB itself. Hopefully we can uh, manage to figure it out. And now let's prepare to test the PCB number 2 which had some issues this one goes here which is the button and LEDs this is the USB but we don't need it we do need SD card slot which goes here and we need also a sensor by the way, the waterproofing on this sensor is uh, achieved by means of some silicon stuff holding the sensor onto the case. This is our lens and sensor, so I will use this. Solder some uh, power wires. Let's keep it like this. Hopefully it will not be a problem. The moment of truth. Okay. Hmm. I never saw a flashing blue light. Pretty interesting. Let's try and insert an SD card and see if the GoPro recognizes it yep it recognizes it but I don't know what this blue flashing thing is because I never experienced this okay let's try and press the record the current went up hmm okay this one appears to be recording <laughs> but what's all the blue flashing the recording works at 1080p 60 frames per second but unfortunately Wi-Fi is not working and USB also is not working I just don't know what to say about it at least it does record on 1080p the only two options right now is to leave it like this and just press record and use it like this maybe find a way to place it on a cine whoop or a whoop it's kind of tricky because of how the PCBs are connected with them I don't know what do you guys think I will leave this one aside and go on to this one for this I will need to install my microscope and see you in a bit so I have here a microphone which I will need to take out and 
and also this thing and I will take this microphone out of here okay and also this plastic thing here which has some glue that's the microphone uh, holder but definitely this connector got hit this button definitely needs to be addressed now before anything else I will change my tip one side is finished let's do the other one let's try and touch up the inside at least it looks better and now the most important thing I'm worried about is this connector here because we don't have video I tend to think that this pin and these pins from here are not soldered anymore that's very hard to tell. Let's take the multimeter. No connection there. Okay, let me try and hopefully get a glimpse from the side. I'm trying to hold this in my hand, but as you can see, these pins should have been soldered here. Good, I'm gonna try and take from that broken motherboard the connector because luckily on that broken motherboard the sensor connector looked all right at least this one looks a little bit better doesn't look all that bad but in the same time it does have some issues I use some flux there heating up the board Hopefully I'm not going to ruin this. Okay, so we took it out, luckily without incidents, the connector looks to be okay. I will put it aside, take this uh, Dunner PCB out of here, okay, and because I have here the processor, I just placed a coin there, and the coin uh, draws some heat, so the MCU would not get crazy hot during this uh, procedure right now I'm hitting the board 
from a distance this uh, micro soldering work is it's pretty difficult to be honest I could have gone to the pain of taking this by uh, using soldering iron but there are so many parts close to it and I don't want to mess things out Luckily all the pins are in a very good state. So right now we will need to get rid of all this lead free solder from here. Unfortunately, I am completely out of alcohol, so the goal here is to place fresh solder onto every pad. Or at least try to. Well, I hope I placed enough solder on those pads because this connector is amazingly tiny. So, uh, not even this connector is perfect. Hopefully it will uh, sit down well. I want to see it sit down all by itself, at least this is what I am hoping.
so I have one, two and three pins that I'm not 100% sure they are connected and for that I'm going to take a very fine tip so as you can see I have here two pins that I'm not sure they are perfectly connected so I'm going to try and touch them out yep they look okay now I have one more here that looks a little bit suspicious let's see yep let's touch up this one too okay so do I have one more run of alcohol to clean this hopefully guys I have to be honest I am very happy of how this turned out Okay guys, so we managed to replace the sensor connector, I hope I, I did a good job and now I'm quite curious to see if I uh, managed to repair this by changing the, the connector because uh, this is one of the most common problems found in sessions, the connectors break off because of the case being too fragile, the PCBs are pushed around inside quite a lot let me change the microscope to my normal camera and let's put some stuff on this PCB and see if it will work or not. So as you can see the, the main section of the motherboard is held only on two screws, one here and one over here. No other screws are present for holding the main section of the PCB here we have also two screws, one here and one here. Okay, so um, I'm ready to test out the little thing. Let's insert here an SD card. And solder the positive. And the negative. So, uh, powering it on, it started up, so that's a good sign. So it appears that um, Hero 5 session doesn't get recognized without it being powered up, so I need to power it up. So I found the camera, I do see a little bit more current draw on the camera now, I suspect that that's the... So I have a perfectly working GoPro right now. This is all due to the fact that the sensor connector was broken, a lot of pins got disconnected from the pads and also the, the connector itself was a little bit damaged so I decided to try and replace it let's try and record and see if it works so it also records it draws around 620 million pers while recording at 2.7k so 1 to 2 amps regulator would be more than enough for a GoPro session to be used on a light quad. You could go even further and do a special case for it like this, but be very careful that this PCB has to stay 90 degrees. I mean, you can bend it a little bit, but if you put it like this, it gets way too long. So thank you very much guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this or at least you learned something, either the insides of the GoPro or not, either some soldering skills, I don't know. I just hope that you appreciate what I'm trying to do here 
and if you do please try and support me by pressing the subscribe button and the notification bell and also you will find some links into the description and that would help me out also thank you very much again and till the next time bye